Hey, this is Ash from All Things Dentistry. Thanks so much for joining me. The next series of videos are gonna be called the Calcified Series. And I was really inspired when I tackled a couple of cases, really calcified cases a few days ago, and you're seeing that you're watching them right now. And I wanted to pay homage to the people in my life that have changed and given, changed my skills and given me the tips that have allowed me to be to conquer these things. And opening up a, ca a canal just like you saw there is like the most magical feeling. I know it sounds cheesy, but I'm passionate. What are the most magical feelings ever? So we're gonna walk through a bunch of tips that I've been taught by some great mentors in my life and I wanna share those with you. So you can do the same. And this is the first tip in this the calcified series, we're gonna call it that. And if you take a periodical radiograph, you know, normally what happens is this is what you see. So you can't see a bit of this. Let's zoom out, there we go. So what happens is you take your periodical radiograph, the patient comes in with complaining of, I have pain, I can't sleep, or whatever the, the patient, the case may be. And you take this x-ray, you're like, oh my gosh, there's no pulp chamber. Uh, this is what I used to do. And I'd be like, uh, well, this is gonna be fairly complicated. And then we like, oh, okay, let's take another one or take a look in the patient's chart and see if there's another one. And still, this is at Zirconia Bridge, tooth number one six, tooth number one seven, and you still can't see the pulp chamber. So then you think like, oh my gosh, how am I getting into this case? But one of the tips that I was taught a long time ago was just take a look at the bite wing. Now, if you know this and you're practicing, you know, you've been in dentistry for two years, you're way ahead of the, the game than I am. I mean, I didn't learn this till about a decade ago. So that's like at year 10 was and you know take a you know even if you have a restorative before the crown if the patient's in your practice that's really helpful take a look at the bite wing to see where the pulp chamber is because the reason why this is effective is because this comes in at an angle you can see this is overlapped superimposed this crown is superimposed over the over the pulp chamber but here we have a perpendicular image so i'm going to show you just remember this little tip this little space right here so if this is tooth number one six this is sort of the mesial buccal, we're assuming the mesial buccal root. This is the distal buccal root or the palate. It's hard to tell here. And you see this little space right here. Well, that's gonna come in, come in, come into play when we get into that access. So let's take another look at another bite wing. And this one's a little less obvious. Um, you can kind of see a little bit of space there. So let's go to the video and we'll just hit play. Uh, this is really interesting because uh, this is my buddy Majid's practice. He's a prosthodontist, so I do his root canals. And he has zirconia burrs, and this one flamed out <laughs> real quick. It said zirconia on it, but it didn't really work. So I grabbed another one, Dana's awesome. So we got through the zirconia, and then this one flamed out again, but watch the cutting pattern. So I burned out the tip, I'm like, well, maybe I can keep going. But then as I kept going, the, I don't know, I had this really weird, like, I cut a groove into the, I don't know, I cut a groove into the burr. It was really strange. So I'm like, well, I don't know. What's going on there? So let's just uh, let's just keep rolling. So we grabbed another really. I think the best advice is grab for zirconia. Grab us. You're gonna put this in the comments. I know it. I sh I knew it before. I should have done it. Super coarse zirconia burr, and it just it cuts like butter. You know, uh, I'm a dad, and just as you're watching this, a really funny dad joke. Somebody got me a calendar at work that says um, it's called dad joke. So uh, the question I have for you is: Have you heard the rumor about butter? So have you heard the rumor about butter? And the answer is, I'm not going to start spreading it. It's a pretty bad joke. My kids hate it too. So um, I'm sure you won't like it either. So what I'm doing here, and this is in that calcified case, is I'm actually using, there's more going on than you, I'm not just drilling into the tooth. Well, I, I literally am. But quantitatively, I'm actually watching where I'm going. So I'm about three millimeters from the mesial marginal ridge. I'm sticking kind of close to the center of the tooth. I'm keeping the angulation along, you see where the, the angulation of the, the, the contour of the mesial part of the tooth, I'm keeping the angulation like that. But I'm, I also measured the length of the burr of the cutting of the cutting diamonds and it's seven millimeters. So I'm actually watching that as we go. That was a subtle little look right there. So I'm watching how deep I'm going because we know from Rasner, uh, Deutsche Musikant, sorry, wrong, wrong article, Deutsche Musikant in 2000, something like that, they talk about the mesial buccal cusp to the roof of the pulp chamber, and that's never going to change, even if the calcify the calcifications get you get calcified from here to here. It's always going to be roughly six millimeters to the top of the roof of the pulp chamber. So you can use that on any burr. You're, you know, if you can measure it out on a burr, it's super helpful. So what we found here 
and uh, I've skipped the whole, uh, cut out a bunch of video, but this is that groove right here. So it actually came into play when we look at our buried bite wings. So you can see that groove right there. Um, that might actually be the palatal canal, but it might, and it's hard to say, we'll never know. But what that is, is right here. So that actually opened up nice. I placed my Explorer. I only got two spots. This is a huge pulp stone calcification. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually, I've, um, this tip I haven't learned from, this is the only thing I've actually figured out on my own was, and I'm, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Instead of using orifice openers, I never really understood them. I just take the wave one gold primary and use that as my orifice opener. So what I'm going to, and it opens the orifice, but it also cleans and shapes the coronal two thirds so I can get hand fouls and tackle the apical third a lot easier. So I'm gonna go into the, that's literally all I'm doing. And I'm, I'm only going to the cutting flutes. I mean, if you've been watching me, this is kind of the technique I've been doing for a long time. I'm just going to the cutting flute. So right here, so it's 16 millimeters. Most teeth are 21, you know, 19 to 21 millimeters long. So I'm within three to four to five millimeters short of the uh, your working length. And what we're doing is I'm just getting space. Now in this distal buckle, I didn't get a lot of space because it, you know, this just kind of, stopped moving apically and that's fine but what it does is it helps you really triangulate where what's going on because then I'm like well I'm just going to open this up again this gives me a little bit better video and it shows I'm going to the depth of the cutting flutes on my palate and then I wasn't able to get much more space on the distal buckle but it does allow me to kind of see what's going on so it's like okay because at some point you're like, hmm, is this actually potentially the distal buckle or is a distal buckle over here and the tooth might be a little bit rotated or change in the angulation. So just to prepare for that, because I didn't take a comb beam before, I didn't feel it was necessary. That's what we do. So we triangulate and then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use a small Munts burr. I'm not sure if you're familiar with those burrs. I use them like eating, it's like eating with a fork. If you use a fork where you live in your country to eat with, um, this is my fork in doing root canals. So what I'm doing here actually, what I'm doing is I'm removing any of that calcification, kind of looking in this, and I'm troughing towards where the mesial buckle, where I believe the mesial buckle was, is and will be. And I also trough towards the distal buckle, uh, sorry, towards the palate, just to make sure there's not an extra distal buckle canal. So actually what's interesting is that in the footage, afterwards, after I rinsed out with sodium hypochlorite and cleaned all this debris up, I actually saw where the mesial buckle was. And I didn't see it while I was doing it. It's actually right there. But while I was doing this, it was so small. I couldn't, there it is right there. I, I didn't actually do see it. And I actually find the MB2. So that's the second tip is to go slow. Use really long shank burrs. So the head of the handpiece is way out of the way. So you can see what the heck is going on. Because if I use a regular, like, uh, you know, the burr, a slow burr, that you, slow round burr you use for decay removal, it's got a really fat shank and you'd never see what's going on. So yeah, you can see the other next tip is for calcified orifices is you look at a look for the white dot or the white line. So this is, I mean, there's a lot of white dots going on here, but this one seems to be, if that's it, that might not be it. It's one of those dots, believe me. You'll see it in just a little bit of a second here. While I'm doing that, uh, Dana, who's an awesome dental assistant, she's just blowing air into the, in, right into the pulp chamber. So write in your comments below if you actually, I'm actually interested to know whether we should start fabricating these burrs, uh, very similar ones. These are called Munts burrs. They're available in the United States, uh, but if you're elsewhere in the world, you might not have access to them. So let me know if you'd be interested. So we're just, what I'm doing is I'm just literally removing nice brushing technique, removing any of that calcification, that pulp stone. And it's right there. There it is right there. But I was looking for other, I was just literally looking to be clean and shape. Oh, that's right. So this is my reminder uh, <laughs> in the middle of my video as I was editing it. So what I did was because I was like, well, let's, I, I know exactly where my mesial buckle, my distal buckle is, my palate. It's still vital. So let's get some sodium hypochlorite down there and debride, you know, dissolve all of our vital tissue. So I actually, which I normally don't do, but in this case, I didn't know where these two canals were. You can see them right here. There's the mesial buckle one, and there's actually pal, uh, there's our MB2. And I saw those actually after we had cleaned this all out. So what I like to do in this case was to open my distal buckle to a medium, which is a 3506, and my palate to 3506. Let the sodium hypochlorite use full strength. Let it 
kind of dissolve the tissue there. There's no rules to endo other than like get rid of the vital tissue, get rid of the bacteria and, you know, get some great outcomes. Other than that, you can do essentially what pattern progression you want. And then what I'd like to do is then come back and then tackle these two. And then by this time, um, it, it cleaned out and I could see what was going on. So this is actually, this is another tip. Um, his name is John Cademy. He has this um, Dental Town face or Dental Town group, and his name is um, uh, you can put it in the comments. I can't remember what it's called, Uger or some I don't know what it's called. Anyways, it's somebody's tips to calcify uh, canals, and this is what he calls the orifice, the MB2 suckers orifice of death. And we were teaching endo. This is kind of what we use as well because this is actually not where the orifice is. The orifice is actually over here, but I'm placing a file in there. I was actually just showing my dental assistant. Actually, I was just kind of like, well, is that actually the MB2? I haven't seen many cases that simple to find. And you can see what's gonna happen is that this is that dentin shelf that grows over here. I have no idea why it does that. Maybe somebody knows, but it, it is what it is. So the, the, you know, the idea is to start taking your six file and start trying to get it down to length. But what happens is it's gonna bang into the canal takes a sharp 45 degree angle bend apically and you're, you're just never going to get down with the file. So what you need to do is to, oh there's the other one, you need to take your Munt Spur or your Round Burr or whatever you got. You can either trough all this away and what I wanted to do is I actually trough, there's going to be one. What I like to do is actually trough a groove right between where that the sucker's orifice of death is and where it's supposed to be. And MB2 was a real challenge to get down actually, it was fairly constricted. So let's speed along here. I think I left them full, we'll just speed along. So I'm using my Munzburg again. And this is a Leica microscope. It's pretty good. I mean, the camera could be better. So what I'm doing there actually is, I'm just opening up, I'm just making sure that is the true orifice of the MB1. So I just open it up a bit there. And now there's our MB2. So you can see the, there's a real good dot. So what's happening is that all the dentin debris is getting put into that, that uh, orifice. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually trough um, trough measly to get where to get to open up that canal and see where it opens up and did, kind of dives apically. Now arguably what I normally do actually is remove all of this but I was fairly confident that that was MB2 and not like an MB3 so we I just elected to keep it like this. So what I'm doing is I'm just using nice light brushing strokes this is a really small round burr. This is the gray one. It's not usually the one I use. I use a purple in this case. And you can see what's happening is that as I'm, I'm literally brushing, it looks like I'm brushing, I am brushing a little bit apically, but here's the orifice. And I'm literally came, I brushed it measly. So now you've got like kind of, kind of like two eyes and a nose. So the orifice is right there. And there's the MB1 orifice. Well, I guess I'm going to open that up a little bit more. All right, so slow round burrs, those are really important. So you can see here, I'm not actually really proud of this. You can see it here. When I was doing my axis, I, I tipped the burr a little bit and kind of went to go. I was actually expecting my MB1 canal to be a little bit more over here. So you can see what happened was I troughed a little bit too much measly here. Is it the end of the day? No. Am I happy about it? No, but I, I just, you know, you're going to see it. So I'm like, okay, well, that's what happened there. I am human. And then we just leave it. So here we're zoomed in now again. And you can see there's that MB1. And there's MB2. So the point of this is that, you know, you're really gonna want to, and that's what I've been taught, you're really gonna wanna place your file in and start tackling away when the, that little sucker's orifice of death is over here, but it actually comes a lot more mesial. And I think actually, as I tried to progress, I mean, it took me a half hour to get down this canal. It was really slow. I'm not gonna put that in here. Um, but as I progressed, I actually had to move it even more mesially. The true concern, and I know if you're watching this, the true concern is like, when am I gonna perf? And I can tell you, you got to practice on extracted teeth. That is one of the biggest, one of the things that uh, I teach our, um, our residents, our students, our, um, our dentists when they're first doing this stuff. you got to practice on extracted teeth. So I'm going to do the same thing with my MB1. So we're going to open that up with the, the Chrome 2 thirds. 
just opening up that the chrome two thirds so I can get that file down there. I'm actually gonna do that with my MD2, I think. If I remember correctly, yeah. I don't get very far. So you gotta be very careful in this technique. I'm not too concerned with tip breaking this tip off. I'm more concerned with ledging. So I'm gonna open that up just a hair before then. I'm gonna start with the six file, six, eight, 10 file. That's six, eight, 10 progression. If you don't know about the six, eight, 10 progression, put it in the comments, I can make another video. I got a bunch out there about six, eight, 10, getting past uh, blockages and dead stops and whatnot. So we've now opened up the MB1 distal buckle palette and our MB2. Let's just get in here. So this is kind of, now I fast forwarded beyond all the cleaning and shaping and I wanted to show you, I forgot before I put this video out, the two, I was gonna put two images. I want to show you kind of where MB2 actually ends up. Right there. So you can see where we started was approximately like right about there. There's where we started and then look where it actually ends up. It's a significant distance. I mean, it's probably about a millimeter difference. So that's, it's really critical for you to know that when you're trying to tackle MB2, if you don't have proper magnification and you feel, I mean, obviously, you know, if you feel unconfident, non-confident to do it, you know, don't do it. Uh, but if you're there and you do see the MB2 and you have a hard time getting down the canal, you know, maybe order some Munts burrs, do a little bit of troughing because you can do this with four times loops or even three and a halfs. You can trough that and bring it easily and that'll make such a big difference in getting down those pesky MB2s. So let's just get, of course, we're going to go in for the glory shot here of our uh, our MB2. So again, there's our MB2, our MB1, and there's that fatal flaw, not fatal, but there's that flaw I went a little bit too mesial. And then that's it. So that's the end of, so there's, you know, the tip number one was getting, you know, take a look at your, at the bite wing. So you can see that we did get, there is space in there. And then it's just taking a look at that video, practicing some extracted teeth, and then you're good to go. So, you know, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and place your comments below. I really appreciate it. Uh, it makes me feel like I'm not alone. We'll talk to you soon.